Hello everybody and welcome back to Total War Warhammer. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at the introduction to the Dwarves faction. For many generations the Dwarves prospered, but then their realm was riven by a chain of devastating earthquakes, followed by sustained attacks by greenskins and other vile foes. Thus the golden age of the Karaz Angkor ended. To this day, the dwarves still fight. Their ultimate goal is to restore their empire. With their belligerence, such a thing is possible. A dwarf throng is a powerful force, consisting of stoic dwarf warriors, gyrocopters that fly above the battlefields, and cannons fueled by flame and steam that spew death. Dwarves do not call upon the winds of magic in the same way as men. To them, magic is a tangible thing. Something that can be worked into axes or cannonballs. It is with all these elements that stalwart dwarvish hearts, exceptional armor and weaponry, and the unmatched machines of war that High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer plans to retake his realm, slaying every last stinking green skin in his way. Few doubt his resolve, and for the first time in many generations, the dwarves are truly roused to battle. The Great Reckoning begins. So a bit more detail if you want on this uh, Dwarven faction that I showed in the Empire video. You can pick on this or, you know, uh, in the Dwarf Guide, you know, the uh, Game Guide here for more information about the Dwarves. Uh, gives you a bit more about their play style, about how they can only capture territory that belongs to Greenskins and other Dwarf factions. Uh, grudges. This is a very important thing to, to take note of. Enemy actions result in grudge missions, all of which must be settled in order to achieve campaign victory. If you don't uh, take care of these right away, uh, then you start to lose like public order in your settlements. So once you get these, they'll just pop up sometimes after something like if an enemy takes a settlement, you'll get a grudge mission to take back that settlement. And you gotta do it pretty quickly because if you don't, it'll be like the longer it stays there without be getting settled, uh, the, the more you know revolt and you know, you'll get from your citizens. You can use the underway, where you can use a network of underground tunnels to avoid impassable terrain enemy armies, plus avoid attrition. Durable units with strong leadership. They have very strong leadership. You will not have a lot of uh, times where your units will run away uh, because of how much armor they have and about how much leadership they have. Excellent range of strong artillery. They have a lot of great artillery in this faction. A strong economy and trade options, because of course, you know, they can do a lot of mining, you can get a lot of trade resources, and thus be able to get more trade agreements. A large technology tree with both military and civic branches. Magic resistance. Expensive unit recruitment costs and upkeep. Yeah, it is expensive, you gotta work on that. They don't have any cavalry, but, you know, they're not necessarily meant for, made for that. Small unit sizes, no magic, but they have, you know, some of the top units like Iron Drakes, Slayers and Gyro Bombers. They start at Karazakarak. So yeah, like I said, scores against the Dwarven still and by all means necessary to keep order underway and roster heavily armored units with strong leadership and variety of deadly war machines. Their initial challenge is easy. So we get our uh, main you know, lo lords here. We have the faction leader, a powerful defensive melee fighter and leader, Thorgrim Grudgebearer. Construction cost for military recruitment buildings is uh, minus 10%. Less upkeep for longbeards and hammerers units, and more experience for hammerers unit recruits. The we have. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, he gets, starts off with a grudge sword, a catap which is a catapult, quarrelers, and hammerers. Thorgrim Grudge Better is the current High King of the Dwarves. He is a throwback to the High Kings of old, eager for new conquests, mighty in battle, and a merciless enemy. Yet upon his warm brow, there also sits great wisdom, and he is able to uphold the ancient traditions as well as to accept, if not embrace, needed changes, such as alliances and new technology. Thorgrim is forever brooding upon how to return his people to their former glory. As the ultimate ruler of the dwarves, the Great Book of Grudges is entrusted into his keeping. It is Thorgrim's avowed wish to avenge every single entry contained in that voluminous uh, tome. Such is his resolve that he has already rejuvenated the Karaz Angkor. Tales of his deeds and the long list of grudges already struck out fill his grim warriors with the feeling that the dwarves have long done without. 
hope, a new age of retribution has begun. Oh, and then we I have Ungrim Iron Fist, a powerful melee fighter and leader. Less upkeep for slayers. Uh, less recruitment cost for slayers. And he has more speed for his units. He also gets thunderers and longbeards. The tale of Ungrim's family is full of woe, as those in the clan of royal blood bear a history of calamities. Many years ago, King Barador, Ungrim's five-time great-grandsire, suffered a terrible loss which drove him to take the oath of the Slayers, to forevermore seek death in battle at the hands of the most deadly enemy that they can find. He was torn between conflicting vows, the Slayer Oath to seek out death, and the oath of a king to protect his people. His son inherited his vows and continued, continued the line of Slayer Kings, of which King Ungrim Ironfest is but the latest. Although Ungrim cannot seek his death in the Slayer fashion, he grows ever more restless, leading the throng of Karakadrin into countless battles. Inspired by his High King and seeking to avenge the death of his lone son, who was slain, Ungrim will march to war with the least provocation. And then we have... You know who I am. Grom Brindal, the White Dwarf. A powerful melee fighter and leader, has a powerful battle ability, Grom Brindal has no fear. Evasion chance when using the underway, minus 40%. Reinforcement uh, range, 30% for Grimdall's army. Can call upon the power of the Ancestor Gods. Starts off with Iron Drakes, Myers of Blasting Charges, and Gyro Copter with Brimstone Gun. For as long as there's been the Kerazankor, there's been the White Dwarf. Grom Brindall is an enigmatic figure recorded throughout the Dwarf's history, appearing to give aid to his bearded kin whenever the situation becomes especially dire. However, what can one dwarf do when a Kerak is besieged by thousands of greenskins, or a dwarf throng surrounded and outnumbered by a war herd of braying ravenous beastmen? In Grom Brindle's case, turns out he can do quite a lot. The white dwarf is a mighty warrior, some say bettered only by Grim Griminar himself. Every slash of his legendary axe sees the heads of Urks tumble from their dishonorable shoulders. Grom Brindal has faced armies of thousands on his own, and won, which is why many believe him to be a living ancestor. According to the bards, he was, and maybe still is, the lover of the venerated hearth goddess Valaya. Grom Brindal himself is never drawn on such a vulgar subject, even when the beer starts to flow during the inevitable post-battle feast. This matters little to most dwarves who are just grateful to have fought beside such a legend and lived to tell of his deeds and achievements on the battlefield. Long before most of the dwarves have sobered, the white dwarf don dons his hooded cloak and wanders away into the night. For there are always more Dawi to aid, more Urks to slay. So. To war! I don't, I haven't, uh, you know, um, acquiring him, so let's say Send if you start off vengeance. with him, the way to acquire these other legendary lords, I this is a little bit more complicated because you have to capture and occupy Karak Kadrin, which is occupied by a different uh, rival dwarf faction. Um, this one, uh, you just have to make like a tier 5 building, I think. So it takes a while to get either of these. Um, but I don't, I think you have to settle a number of grudges in order to unlock Grudge Bearer. So I usually find that starting off with Grudge Bearer is, a, is a pretty good. So we're going to be taking a look at the introduction to the Dwarf Faction. Starting as the High King Thorgrim Grudge Bearer. As I mentioned in the previous video, you'll get to see the same advisor from before. It's great, like, in each cinematic, you see him, like, he just finds him. He's like, I am now advising this leader. And here's the cinematic for the dwarves. The old world is a crucible of relentless war.
They delved too greedily and too deep. I find it a bit odd that dwarves are using pretty much helicopters. It just seems a bit off to me. But as the storms gather again, it presents a chance for the brave to bring about an age of reckoning. I come to the Dwarf High King as a herald of such times, and so I find myself at the King's right hand. My presence is timely. But dire news comes from the south. Greenskins flock to the banner of a cruel war boss. Now, my liege, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, leads a mighty throng from Karazakarak, smashing aside any foes that block our path. Bearer desires to return the Karaz Angkor to its former glory. Then he must rid his lands of vile greenskins. Those gathering within the shadows of Everpeak are a good start. They foul our mountains with their vile taint. The Damas Kron, our great book of grudges, is filled with such green skin atrocities. Bring hammer oh. and axe. Show these irks and Groby no mercy. Oh. Your forces begin their attack, my lord. See for yourself. I guess my troops. There are the green skins. Lots of orcs. Vile green skins. Be sure to join the fight yourself. The warriors will be greatly inspired by your presence. Cannons. And grudge throwers, excellent. I agree. Let us march forward. Come, pull bearers, carry him onto the field. Does anyone else but me think that this looks a little silly? He never gets off that chair. These guys carry him everywhere. That help and advice is available at your request, my lord. You may rely upon it. I just think it looks a tad bit silly. Got uh, Grudge Bearer, who is a great Havoc Symmetry Armor Meta Expert. We've also got Longbeards, an Axe with Armored and Shielded, Charge Offensive and Longbows, and Old Grumblers. What are, what does Old Grumblers mean? Respected for their great age, superior courage, and length of their facial hair, Longbeards have an encouraging effect on their allies' leadership should the Lord be absent. guys around. Ah. Just go ahead and attack. Attack! Attack! We have plenty of forces here. The enemy begin to crumble. They run from the back. Yes. 
Make them flee. Make them run. Of the forces you control, sire. Effective command of your army is a skill worth mastering. Ooh, Goblin Big Boss, get him! Get that leader. Ooh, let's see. More charge bonus, our piercing damage, speed bigger. There we go, fix my isolation melee defense. Yes! May my abilities help bolster you, my men! They are. From a distance. They're fine. Actually, those trolls are heading to them. Actually, you guys go attack. Grudge Bear, you continue to attack this guy. Was actually the cinematic camera. Don't sway the battle, sire. Your words and actions can inspire the troops before you. Use your influence and abilities. Those trolls are just kind of chilling over there. I'm worried about them attacking my missile unit, but they seem to not be doing anything. The enemy general joins the battle at last. Nashrak fights amidst his mounted warriors. Cut him down. March forward. March forward. He is Nashrak. Charge! Clear these out, and then we'll move over there. Although he is getting bombarded by our artillery. Let's Jesus just go after Nashrak. But it looks like we already won. The battlefield is secure. Well, okay then. Didn't even have to go after the general. But of course, this is only the tutorial introduction. They usually make it pretty easy, especially if you set the settings to easy like I do. There's our stronghold, Karazakarak. The mountains rumble to the sound of your armies marching, yet the threat to your kind has scarcely That's finished. a dwarven stronghold. The lands around here remain infested with filthy green-skinned scum. See for yourself. <laughs> filthy green-skinned scum. The green skins of the Bloody Spears continue to defile your most sacred monuments. They must be expelled from these mountains with all haste. No dwarf king should tolerate such a presence so close to Everpeak. I agree. The Pillars of Grungni will be ours again. We'll take them from those vile green skins. The dwarfs of Barakvar look kindly upon your cause, sire. With sufficient persuasion, they would likely join your struggle against the Greenskins. Or let me confederate them into my own group. 
The scabby eye tribe of Greenskins maintain their hostilities against you from their feeble camps upon the plains. Be sure to watch their movements carefully. Vengeance must be the answer. The Bloody Spears cannot be allowed to regroup after their defeat. Press forward and maintain the offensive. So we've got hammers, dwarf warriors, miners, corlers, and a grudge thrower. Beards and belts. Good. The enemy will no doubt have picked Beards up your Beards and belts. Movements. They will be frantically barricading their hovels in preparation for your arrival. More of your proud kin stand ready to take up arms against the invaders, my lord. Recruit them, and they will be ready to fight in the battles that are to come. I can't recruit these guys because I don't have uh, the necessary buildings to do so. Agreed. Well, I'll just recruit these the guys. The recruits will make first-rate warriors, I'm sure. For now, the throng must remain in place to train them. Let's also look at improving your infrastructure at home. A solid base of operations will repay itself on the battlefields ahead. Upgraded training facilities will allow you to better train the Dowie to fight, uh -huh. sire. Excellent. Stout hands will be set to work immediately. You must seek ways to further your methods of war if you are to drive the orc filth from the mountains. Put the finest minds from the guilds to work on improving your practices and knowledge. So you can see the dwarves have a huge technology tree to be able to research. Uh, the way of the clans and the way of the guilds. Income from settlements, public order, recruitment cost, recruitment cost. Hmm. What would I want to start off with? I guess we would uh, want to get this first, since we're usually going to be recruiting early on. Good. In time, the law they will gain will surely aid you. I know your patience wears thin, my king, but you must temper the need for vengeance with further intelligence of the Groby's actions. There is nothing more to do for now. So that is the introduction for the Dwarf uh, Faction campaign. And when we come back, we'll be taking a look at the Greenskins. Stay tuned. <laughs>